Carl Schuf here from snorkel.tv and I'm pleased to announce the solution to the orbital challenge and I'm so happy that so many people took a stab at this challenge and the challenge just had a circle that was pulsing in size with a little green circle that was going around it and if we ever clicked we could reverse the direction now I got a whole variety of solutions to this challenge and the person who solved this within an hour came up with this awesome example here that worked just great. We have Jan Jordanson, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that in any way. And he has an awesome site here. Uh, he wrote a tutorial on creating circles based on a series of anchor points. And then when you tween those anchor points, you can get some really funky effects. So I'll link this up. It's an awesome technique that he's using. and. Uh, I suggest you check out his site and all that he has to offer there. He has great tutorials. Um, some other people, and his code was actually fairly quite simple. Um, not too much going on here. All right, can you believe it was all handled with just this? That is awesome. Some other people, you know, had some more complicated code. Not that it's wrong, but it involved a little bit more math and conditional statements. And here's another one here dealing with radiuses and cosine, sine, and some math. And all this is great, but what I want to show you is that my solution doesn't require much math at all. And so, how did I do it? Well, if we go to my favorite thing in the world, the Green Sock documentation, you may notice that there is this category here, a package for motion paths. And Green Sock has come up with a series of classes here for allowing you to create simple shapes like circles, which could be converted to ovals, rectangles, and lines that you can assign a number of followers to. And let's just look at Circle Path 2D because the solution for this challenge was pretty much ripped directly from this documentation and I just made a few different uh, tweaks here. So the idea is that you create this Circle Path 2D object and you give it an X and Y position and a radius. And then what you can do is assign a series of followers it will get attached to the circle and then you can either tween the circle path or the actual follower. So there's a few different ways that you can use this stuff, but there are classes for circle path, line path, where you can have a series of line segments that objects will follow, and also rectangle path. So really, just dive right into this documentation after you see the rest of this video. Jumping back into Flash, I have a few examples created where I took code just from that documentation so you could see exactly how it works. Here we have a number of path followers on a circle and they are spinning around and the circle is being tweened in its shape. So you can get really cool fun little effects like this without using much code. And when I say not using much code, for that example right there, here we just have a loop that's creating a series of uh, balls okay that are pushed to an array we're telling my circle path 2d to distribute those objects evenly I'm not going to get into all those parameters right now and then we're just doing two tweens on the path by tweening the progress of the path it takes all those followers and does a complete rotation of them all the distribute method puts them all evenly spaced on the circle if I want to have just maybe 10 items on that circle very easy Another cool thing I can do here is I can offset the rotation of all of those objects. So if I just set this to 90 here, you may notice that they're all uh, rotated just a little bit. Okay. If I ever want to see the actual path, I can say dun, 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 add child path. So now I have a re visual representation on the stage of the actual circle and you can see how the objects are rotated around that path. So here, there's literally no math. It's just some very basic tween max code that you're used to, plus a new object. Now, I strongly recommend that you read the, the documentation because this is not going to be a full-blown tutorial. For Rectangle Path 2D, now I have a single follower that's tweening itself around a rectangle. And the code for that is really straightforward. I said really straightforward. Um, you draw a rectangle, add your rectangle to the stage, which is optional. You create a path follower, which just happens to be a movie clip that's on the stage, and then we tween that follower. So, did you see that? Did you see that? 
all that animation, the drawing of the square, that all happened with just a few lines of code? I thought so. There's also line path, which now we have many followers following the path, and then the path spins around, and they're all still moving. So that's pretty hardcore, right? Well, all of this I just copied literally right out of the online documentation, pasted it into my file, and it worked. So it's all ridiculously commented, so please read through it, check it out. This set of tools is really just going to totally blow up your mind as far as what you can do with the GreenSock tweening platform. So let's get back to my orbital challenge. And very quickly, um, I have a file right here where there's a simple orb going around that circle. And that's pretty much all it does. So I'm going to walk you through the code that I have right now. We're importing the plugins that we need. We're importing the motion paths package. And we're, imp we're activating the circle path 2D plugin. I'm creating a shape, which is the actual green orb. Okay, I just have a little create circle method down here that uses the graphics API to draw a green circle for me. And then this is the new thing where I'm creating a circle path 2D with an X of 275, Y of 175, and a radius of 125. This line right here just makes the actual stroke of that circle white. If I wanted to make it red, obviously, one, two, three, four, just to show you that that is the actual path that I'm changing the color of, okay? And then as we move down, I'm adding the circle, which is the path again to the stage, and then this is what makes the animation happen. This thing called circle tween is a simple tween max that's telling my shape, which is the orb, to take four seconds. And using the circle path 2D plugin, we're passing in the name of the path that that object is going to be on. It's called circle. We're telling it to start at an angle of zero, end at an angle of 360, and spin counterclockwise with an ease, with a linear ease. So it's constant motion going around. So right now I get one circular rotation out of that little orb there. Now, I also have built in the ability to reverse that tween, okay? So it's playing forward, I click, and it reverses. And let me just show you where that's happening. That's happening in the stage event listener. I'm just gonna tell the circle tween to toggle or do the switcheroo of its reversed property and then resume. But in my bonus file, it never stopped. Once it got to the end, it kept going. It repeated back to the beginning. So let's start this one more time. And once the current progress of this tween gets to one, I'm going to switch it back to zero and then have it resume and keep playing. So in order to do that, I could easily say um, in this circle tween here, I'm going to say on complete play again. And play again can just tell the uh, circle tween to set its current progress equal to zero, and then I can tell circle tween to resume, and we'll test it. And then now you'll see there's a slight error there and that is because that is an N and not an M. And so now, once the current progress gets to one, it's gonna go back to zero and just keep playing. So now I have constant animation. Now, when I click to reverse, it stops. Well, I'm not triggering anything on reverse complete. So let me put that little call back in there on reverse complete, I'm going to call play again also, but now we're going to have a little problem. When I reverse, what? what's happening? Well, the current progress is already at zero, and if it resumes, it has nowhere to go in reverse, okay? So here's something that we can do that will handle both toggling the current progress to zero or to one, because when I'm reversing, I'm going to go back to a current progress of zero, but then I want to switch it to a current progress of one and then continue re reversing so that I have this seamless loop in both directions. And here is my solution for that. One little line is going to be this. 
So here I'm saying that tell the current progress to be set to the reversed property converted to an integer. So if I'm playing forward, when I get to the end, the reversed value is going to be false, and that is going to convert itself over to zero. So then when we resume at a progress of zero, it starts playing forward again. If I had been reversed, the reverse property is going to be true, which will convert over to a current progress of one, and then it will resume. So it's going to jump to the end and then go backwards. So just watch this. If I go backwards now, it keeps going around because when I went to the end, it said, oh, my current progress is reversed. Reversed converted to an, uh, or I should say true converted to an integer is going to be one. So then it says, okay, I'm going to be completed and then I'm going to keep resuming backwards all the way to zero. So it's a seamless loop that we have here, regardless of where I click, that ball is always going to be rotating the way it should. Now, in my challenge, you notice that the circle was scaling and doing some funny stuff. So let's go back up here, and I'm simply going to activate this tween here. That while all that motion is happening with that path follower, that I'm going to tell the circle to change its scale to negative 2, and we're going to yo-yo, and then you have this. So no math, nothing funky, and there you go. Come in, come out, and then you guys know that I threw a bonus at you, and I said, the bonus is super simple. And the bonus had things, you know, flipping around, rotating, and all I did was this. I changed the scale y to negative 2, all right? And then now we're going to get this sort of oval that flips on itself, and you get this really nice smooth animation. And while that's happening, I also just chucked in a rotation of 90. So that circle is also going to be spinning. And check this out. So you get all this crazy fun stuff. And while that's happening, I can still do my reverse at any time. So once I had the, the whole motion in there, it wasn't that difficult to take it to the next level. And again, you could have a number of followers like I have done in this file here and have them all following that circle while that circle is growing and spinning. So it's really pretty cool. I'm going to give you all these files. You'll have fun with it. And one more thing that I was playing around with too, I could tell each ball that I get created here. You know, you could even probably mess around with some blend modes here to see how they overlap. If I wanted to tween a whole bunch of other balls, I could put 50 of them in here. And just very cool. You know, it's like, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? It is. And while that's happening, I could also say, let's do a Y of negative uh, 0.2 here, just to get that switch around effect. And that might be a few too many circles on that path, but you get the idea. Once you have this stuff in place, which again, you can just easily copy out of the docs, it's really fun just to play around with it and you get all these nice, cool, fun effects. So definitely check out the Motion Path documentation and uh, stay tuned for the next challenge. You guys were awesome. Oh, one more thing. Back to my solution file. I know I went a little bit quick over this. This one line of code is literally the same as, let's go back and do a little longhand conditional just to test which way the uh, tween is running. So here it's written out longhand. I can say, if the circle tween's reversed, then set the current progress to one. If it's playing forward, then set it to zero. So that just gives me my seamless animation of that little orb. So that will work too. Click to reverse, and it's all groovy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next challenge. Get those brains ready. Take care.